yet another prop video. Yeah, I know, even I'm tired of talking about props, but I keep testing, I keep finding new findings, and I keep coming up with things to say, so maybe my findings will help somebody out there. But before I talk about the GenFan prop, I wanna show you this motor. This is the new, the X-Sync, or I keep calling him X-Sync, Sing, his name is Sing. It's, it's the pronounced Sing, I'm just the moron that keeps saying X-Sync. Anyways, this is uh, the 2210 motor that, that he's trying to manufacture, produce, which is really just being tested. We're testing it to see if it's uh, good for six inch and seven inch class size. The 2210 stator, well, there's a lot of discussion there. It's a really nice motor, it's 44 grams. It's, it's really interesting. I don't know if he wants me to talk about some details. Some things about the motor will change. This is probably not gonna be the one that actually is, like, is sold, maybe it is, I'm not sure. But more on that later. And before I talk about the GenFan prop, I wanna talk about the Flywoo motors. So this is a motor from a company that I personally have never heard of. Maybe they've been around a while. I don't know, but I freaking love them because they are gold and so like, <laughs> so like wrapper looking. It's amazing. I don't even know why I like it. It just looks so shiny and so nice. They are great motors. They perform fantastic. It is a little bit curious that they come with um, 18 gauge wires, but I even love the 18 gauge wires because it really feels like robust and like really makes you feel like you're holding a motor uh i've said it before motor manufacturers have seemed like they have realized how to make a good motor and right now if you spend at least 16 dollars on a motor of the 2206 through 2306 size 2207 2208 you will get most likely a motor that has all the good parts in it and by good parts i mean it has uh, nine millimeter bearings. It's got at least a steel hollow shaft, if not a titanium hollow shaft. And now a lot of them are coming with an M3 nut on the bottom, not just like a, an M2 nut on the bottom. And the bottom, I'll show you here. Yeah. On this motor here, you can see here, it it's actually an M3 hole there. So you can actually unscrew the motor and take the bell off. They have at least 0.2 millimeter laminations, if not 0.15 millimeter laminations and uh, you'll find really nice windings. Almost all of them have solid windings now. I think that they're more heat resistant. I don't, can't really confirm that. They all seem to have very strong magnets. They have curved magnets, really tight air gaps. Overall, the construction of motors have really gotten a lot better over the years, and now they're really good. There are a number of motors out there that all perform really, really stellar, and I particularly like the Flywoo and the, the Sing motors because they have this little feature in the bell. Here. So if you look, it's really hard to see, but inside this bell, you'll see that ring of metal. If I take that ring of metal off, which I cannot reach, you'll see that there's a little green rubber ring underneath it. Yeah, there we go. Is that visible now? I think, I hope so. That little green rubber O-ring there, that, as far as I can tell, it tries to save the bearing in the event of a crash and that's a really nice feature but that's not why i particularly like it i like it because when i do assemble the motor and put it together i can tighten that screw underneath completely and the motor still spins freely because that o-ring is pulling up the slack when you tighten the screw all the way so that's really really super nice and while i have this motor out this is what the flywheel motor looks like when it's brand new not after i've crashed it once or twice. Actually, I haven't, it's just really tumbled into like grass and spun around and it's hard to see here, but this particular motor has just like, looks like, sm like smudge scrapings all over it. So that's a really downside with the polished chrome finish. But yeah, the great motors, great motors. I, I mean, I don't recommend one over another because uh, most of them are all good. They're just really good. <laughs> they all become really good motors. Look for that nine millimeter bearing. Look, look for all those features that I talked about. But in the end, if you're spending 18, 16, at least $16 on a motor like the uh, Iashin 2306, which I think is the best value motor right now because it's a really high quality motor for like $16. The only thing that really lacks in that motor is the bearing. The bearing is a nine millimeter bearing. However, it is just a really cheap bearing. So over a couple of flights, the bearing does start getting rolly. However, that doesn't really affect the performance. Those motors are not quite as perfectly balanced as some of the Sing motors or other motors that are a little bit more expensive, but they are fantastic motors. Okay, so now let's get to <clears throat> the GemFan prop. This is a really, really, really interesting prop. And before I actually talk about the prop, I'll talk about the different materials. They actually sent me this prop and a bunch of other props 
in two different materials. So the first material that you see on top here, this is the, they're calling the, uh, no, sorry, this one, this one on top, the more opaque material, they're calling the master prop material. And when I ask them what it actually is, they tell me it's a, it's a mix of a nylon and a polycarbonate. I don't even know if those two things mix, but it just sounds like a polycarbonate. And the difference between the polycarbonate and this other material on top is that the, this material is stiffer. It's a lot stiffer. It's a lot, lot stiffer. It's, it's more stiff than the glass nylon material that's used in the very old um, 5x4x3 made by HQ and Jeff Van and a whole bunch of other people. And then the polycarbonate underneath. Just by me flicking these, you can even hear how much stiffer the master prop material is. So the question is, does that actually make a difference? Well, yes and no. Depending on the prop, it does make a pretty significant difference. On the old HQ 5x4x3, the polycarbonate variants from Dahl and Gemfan and other people were just terrible. They just, they, they had no speed, they had poor efficiency, they had worse grip. Everything about them was just a lot worse. However, these newer props are engineered to have a better kind of shape form, I'm assuming, because they're using the same material, but it's a lot stiffer feeling than any of those old 5x4x3 props or a bunch of other props in the way past that came in both kind of a glass nylon as well as a polycarbonate eventually over time. So how does this actually affect performance? Well, on those old props, it really did make a big difference. On these new props, it doesn't make as much of a difference as I was expecting. It does make some difference, but definitely not huge. The master prop material that is stiffer does tend to have more of a bite. Definitely has more speed, a little bit more speed, and it has a little bit less I mean, prop wash is a really hard thing. It's really, it's hard to, t there's such little prop wash now that it's really hard to even discuss whether one prop has a better prop wash handling properties than another. However, I feel like, and I say feel because it really is just a feeling, I feel like the stiffer prop should technically, because it does feel more responsive as well, very, very slightly, very, very slightly more responsive, it should be better at managing prop wash. However, these differences, like I keep exclaiming, are very, very minor between these two props. It's to the point where they could just choose either material and it would be totally fine. I can't tell which one is more durable than another. I haven't crashed. I mean, I tumbled once into like weeds with the polycarbonate version and it was totally fine. Uh, I haven't crashed the, the stiffer version, but I'm assuming that the stiffer one will crack and break easier than the polycarbonate or the full polycarbonate version. I don't know. I would be happy with either one of these props. And so now let's talk about the actual prop and the performance. This is a really super interesting prop for a couple of reasons. So before this prop, the prop that from Gemfan that I would really recommend for acro or freestyle or whatnot was the T-Motor 5143. And I think I recently found out that this prop actually isn't, it's, it's, it's produced by Gemfan, but I don't think it's designed by Gemfan. I think that the T-Motor the actually had a different designer that designed the prop for them and they just had Gemfan manufacture the prop and produce the prop, which does make a lot more sense now that I wonder why on earth T-Motor is making props, but it does definitely make sense that they would have done that. So after this prop came out, Gemfan came out with a series of other props, the 5149, 5149.9 props. Those were two great props. I didn't particularly like the 5149.9 because it just became like an all-around general prop that wasn't really special at anything. However, the 5149, the one before it, the predecessor, did have remarkably good high-speed control, and that was its big benefit. However, low speed was just awful, and the material it came in was a little bit wonky, at least originally. It was the material that when you, if it bent, it would find like the white line, so the prop was pretty much dead. So moving on to this prop, this is a 5146.6, and I don't know why Jumpfan has made these numbers even more confusing than they are. I wish they would just name them like one, two, three, four, just like <laughs> that's it, and no more numbers, because I don't think the pitch number means anything. Thankfully, the 51 does mean something. It is a 5.1 inch prop. It is just a tiny bit bigger than others. However, Different companies have different naming schemes for their 5.1 inch props. Uh, HQ, HQ's idea of a 5.1 inch prop is a five inch prop with one millimeter added. And Gemfan's idea of a 5.1 inch prop is an actual 5.1, it's just ridiculous. There's no standardization at all. Anyways, moving on, the polycarbonate version of this prop is four grams. The master prop series, prop material, whatever it is, this stuff is 4.2 grams. 
The master prop material is stiffer. It does have just ever so slightly more response. However, it really, really is difficult to tell the difference between these two props. You really have to just test them side by side on an identical quad, which is exactly what I did to be able to tell the difference. However, you can definitely tell the difference when you do fly it. You just have to test it side by side. So both of these props, I'm really just going to talk about the polycarbonate version. I'm assuming that this is the one that's actually going to come out. Both of these props are fantastic response. It's really amazing that prop companies have made an effort to get the weight down. Uh, we First we had the S3 prop. Well, first we had this, this T-motor prop. Then we had the S3 prop. And now we have this prop. They're really excellent weights. But the really special thing about this particular prop is that it is really low weight with a more aggressive pitch than we usually see with a prop of this weight. And something else you'll notice is that, well, I'm showing you the pitch here. So you can see that the, the prop on the top definitely has a much lower pitch and the prop on the bottom definitely has a much greater pitch. And so the reason this is actually special is because you get this combination of really excellent response as well as really excellent power and speed. And that usually means inefficient. However, that's where this prop really does shine. It's surprisingly efficient for the speed that it gives you. It is so efficient at moving through, just moving, just like moving at a steady clip, like that's not slow. It's surprisingly efficient at doing that. The video that, the flight video that you're probably watching right now is about four minutes of flying. And before that was about a minute that I flew and I just tumbled into some bushes. So I just reset the video. So that's almost five minutes of flying on a 1,050 milliamp battery. That's really impressive. And as you can tell, I'm not flying slow. I'm not just like hovering around. With most props, I would be done at two and a half, three minutes flying like this. But somehow this prop was able to muster quite a bit more than two and a half, three minutes. And it's, it's really surprising to me. And that is really the biggest notable feature about this prop. Aside from that, I already said the response is fantastic. The efficiency is surprisingly good. It's not like amazing, but it's it's nice to see that it doesn't destroy your battery because there are a lot of props out there that just totally annihilate batteries. The grip on it is, is a lot better than I was expecting as well. It's similar to the 5149 in high speed control, which is really great. It's also good at low speed control. There's really just one shortcoming to this prop, which is kind of frustrating. Also the, the weight, it's a four gram prop, so you can't really expect it to be that durable. However, the hub is also a little bit thick. They could potentially drop it another 10th or 10th and a half gram, whatever. So the durability is, is in question. But the one thing that really is just a little annoying about this prop is that if you know, if you remember what the Cyclone felt like a long time ago, when I first flew the Cyclone, I thought, wow, this is an amazing prop. I didn't know what I was doing back then, but I thought this is a really amazing prop because it was just so, it felt like it had so much control. When you gave it control inputs, it had such a sharp, like, quick response. The, the initial onset of the response was so nice and sharp that I was like, oh, well, this is really good. Like, I have really great control. But now I don't like that. I, I prefer to fly smoothly. I don't want that, that robotic look in my video. And that's something that a lot of other people have talked about as well with different firmwares. Some firmwares just do a better job at managing that roboticism kind of look when you give it stick inputs. You get this kind of like robotic frame moving look. And this prop has a little bit of that. And the only reason I even bring that up is because I recently received a couple of other props that do a really stellar job of smoothing that out. So my way of smoothing that out is by using a feed forward number of around 18, 19. And that really, really smooth things out a whole lot. It does make the stick feel a little bit dull, but it doesn't make the quad feel like it's unresponsive. I think it's a really good compromise to use this prop and have your feed forward really, really down low. I don't know why that's being caused. I don't know what is causing that at all, but hey, it's uh, something that I noticed and this is a way to solve it. I do like this prop more than any of the new props that I have so far, except for the Johnny prop. The Johnny prop is, is a very special prop. However, it does have kind of a little bit of flaw as well. And another thing I wanna note is that, oh yeah, so compared, comparing the team, this uh, gem fan prop to the old T-Motor, not now old, T-Motor 5143, they feel almost identical, except that the 5143 has moved the entire power band lower. That just means that your low end of the throttle does less and your top end of the throttle does less. Whereas the new Gemfan 5146.6 
has just more power in the low end and the top it just has more power overall however the overall efficiency of the two props are very 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 similar i think these are two stellar stellar props and finally the last thing i want to throw in there is the motor choice for this prop these new props that are coming out as well as the the t-motor 5143 as well as a couple of other props i know of these props were designed for a specific motor. They were designed for a 2306 motor. I personally am a big proponent of 2208. However, I do realize that there are benefits to the 2306 motor. There's also benefits to the 2208. And I'm trying to like 2306 a lot. And with these new props that are coming out that are actually designed for 2306, that is a very good reality that the 2306 motor, to me, it becomes fly, it becomes really, it could really great. And so, I'll talk about the differences between 2306 and 22 whatever. The main issue that I see with 22 motors is that when you let off the throttle, your PID control kind of goes away. <laughs> you just get this wobble if you pitch forward and let off the throttle. That's the easiest way to see it. You get this wobble and that started in like Betaflight 3.4, no, even before 3.4, like 3.3, it started happening and it got worse along the way. I don't know why it happens. I can't do anything in tuning or whatever to try and get rid of it. And that's something that the 2306 does not do. I can only attribute that to improved PID performance because of the wider stator somehow has more control of the prop whatever the, the area where the 2306 does suffer to me is that in the low end of the throttle you get this hump of power down low which is just unavoidable and it's just so mentally distracting when i'm giving it throttle trying to stay low to the ground trying to do something very delicate with the throttle and i hit this hump of power and it goes shoo, and i can't control it it's just like it, you get this wave of power so these more recent props they have they have been designed to manage that hump of power and that's really the beauty of these new props going forward is that they're trying to improve all that thing, all that stuff. The 2208, or just taller stators in general, have exquisite, just exquisite throttle control. It's just so nice and easy to control the throttle. When you give it throttle, it does exactly what you're expecting. It's really amazing. And that's why I prefer the 2208 stator size, or just the taller stator in general. When you raise the stator size on a 23 size motor, it does a couple other wonky things, which I'm not gonna get into right now. But that is something I also feel with this, uh, the Sing 2210. It is just exquisite, exquisite throttle control. However, when you do let off the throttle a little bit too quickly, you do get this wobble, which to me tells me that maybe the motor, I don't know, I haven't looked at the code. I don't look at, at black box. I don't look at any of that stuff. I only go by testing so many things. I've tested so much stuff and that's all I really go by. So that's it for now. Hope this was helpful or informational or whatnot. Take care, don't forget to floss your teeth and there's lots of stuff coming, bye.